need God for Jane? God said that that um, He sees you as an author, even though you don't. And He says that He already has the pages written out, and for you, you not to be disappointed. And He said, not only that, not only does He have the pages written out, that He would reveal them to you, and you would you would not believe how you can't even keep up of how fast you're going to be writing it. And he said that it wasn't a mistake that you chose his children to write for. And he said that not only was he going to remove your books from the back, that he was going to move them to the very front. And with this change in you that he's going to be giving you, that you are going to be very successful. And that with what you have for income with that, you're going to feed in to the ministry of children wherever that it needs to go for the protection of them, for the keep of them, to be fed for them. And he said, but most of all, he saw you just frustrated and like if you had writer's block, and he said, that's not me. He said, that, that is your enemy trying to block me from coming through. He said, just get up, pray about it, walk Amen. back in, and watch what he does. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank everybody for being here tonight. I know it's hot outside. Yes. Uh, we've got that on 64 and it's 77 in here. So, yeah, we're doing Hi, all God. Hey, praise God, it's not as hot as hell, huh? Amen. <laughs> Give me a whole lot of verse. Hallelujah. You can't stand this. You sure don't want to go there. Amen. That's what I say all the time, Pastor. Amen. <laughs> all right, church. Let's go ahead and turn to Second Peter chapter one. Verse two. Second Peter chapter one, verse two. Amen. Everybody there? Amen. My Bible just kind of opens up to it now. <laughs> he said, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through what? Knowledge. The knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. According to his divine power, hath, say hath, hath given us all things that pertain unto life and to godliness. Through what? Knowledge. The knowledge of him has called us to glory and virtue. Whereby are given to this seemingly great and precious promises, that by these promises you might be partakers of the divine nature and escape the corruption that's in the world through us. I'm going to try to just go over a real quick summary, and then we're going to go ahead and get back in. We were talking about the promises of God last Wednesday, and I want to go ahead and finish up on that if we can. He said, Through grace and peace we will be multiplied unto us through the knowledge of God. I said this every Wednesday. The more you understand who he is, the more you understand what rights and authority you have, the more peace you're going to have in your life. You're not going to worry because you know who God is. Amen. You're not going to worry because you know who you are in Christ. Amen. 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 We spend so much time, so much of our time wasted it worrying about things that never even come to pass Amen. most of the time. Amen. Amen. If we just turn that around and spend that time to worry, Praising God, praying to God, talking to God about it. Yes. The Bible says, let your request be made not unto God Amen. with prayer and thanksgiving, and He will give you peace that passes all understanding to guard your heart and your mind. Amen. Amen. Yes. So then we're telling everybody else but God what our problems are. Amen. They can't change you, they can't make it any better for you. Take it to somebody that can. Amen. 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 He said, according to his divine power, he's already given us half in his past tense. He's already given us everything that pertains to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that's called us to glory and virtue. Most of the church, the Bible says my people perish from lack of knowledge. Most of the church does not understand that. They're still begging God for things that God says, God's already done it. 2,000 years ago, it was settled on the cross. Jesus said, it's finished, man. I've done everything I need to do. Now you need to believe and receive what I have already got for you. 
Amen? Amen. He says, through the knowledge of him has called us to go in virtue, whereby are given us exceedingly great and precious promises, that by these promises you might be a partaker of his divine nature. And we were talking about the promise of God. There's over 7,000 promises in the Bible. Most of us, we don't even, we didn't even really realize that. That's a lot of word, huh? Amen. Amen. But he said, by these promises, things he's promised you and I according to the word of God. Now, the promises are sometimes conditional. You do, and God will do. The trouble is, we're not doing what we want God to do. Amen. He says, I'm waiting on you to do your part. I've already got my part taken care of. Because when we do our part and we believe him, our faith reaches into the spiritual realm and brings out what God has already got for us. He said it's already there. We bring it out of the spiritual realm into the natural realm and we have what God has promised us. Amen. Trouble is, while we're waiting on that to come out of the spiritual realm into the natural realm, we get impatient. We get discouraged. When in God win. When you start believing, you're going to start receiving. Amen. Amen. We're not. Listen, one thing I've tried to get over through this whole teaching, quit begging God. Exactly. Start believing God. Come on. Find out what your whatever your situation is, find out the word that's dealing with your situation and begin to confess that word back unto God. You know, most people when they pray, they pray their problems. Yeah. God already knows your problems. Amen. Amen. We we'll pray, oh God, I need this, and this is going on in my life. You think God, he already knows all that. Okay, amen. He wants to see, okay, what are you going to believe me for? Come on, amen. Lord, I thank you. I may, I have the sickness in my body, but I thank you. By Jesus Christ, I was healed. I was healed in Jesus. Yes. Yes. My yes. banker called me and said, I'm overdrawn at the bank. But thank God you said, thank Jesus, you're part of my needs before you're receiving yes. for my life. Amen. United with him, get in agreement with him. Because he said, I move on my word. He said, I watch over my word performing. He said, it does not return void, but it accomplishes the things I said it to be. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. All right. I've hammered that enough, church. <laughs> y'all know y'all should know that backwards and forward. Then we went to Deuteronomy 1 8, where God says, Go with, he told Israel, go into Egypt and go into the promised land, the land I have already given you. Past tense. He says, go in there and possess what I've given you, church. God has already given us these promises to the church, just like he gave the promised land to Israel. But we have to possess them because you and I have an enemy that doesn't want us to possess what God says we can have. Amen, that's right. And then in Numbers chapter 33, verse 53, the last scripture was Deuteronomy 1.8. Yeah, right. Numbers 33, verse 53, he said, go in and dispossess the inhabitants that are there. He already gave them the land, but there were some people there that didn't want to give it up. I mean, realize the promise of God are ours, but the devil don't want to give them up. Right, exactly. Okay? okay? So you have to dispossess. You have to take authority. You have to use the word of God. Amen. And you can't go, devil, just get out of here. He's going to look at you and laugh. Okay. What did Jesus do? He used the word on them. Yes. He used the word on them. Church, that's what you and I got to do. Use the word. Speak the yeah. word. When you speak the word, the Holy Spirit moves on the word. We got all this power inside. He said the same strength that raised Jesus from the dead. We have that authority. We have that power. But we haven't learned how to release it. And we see people on TV and think, man, I'd like to be like them. Look at the miracles and signs and wonders. Look at the people who are the yeah. Spirit. You know what? They have learned how to release yeah. what they have Amen. on the inside, church. And they don't have no more than you and I do. Because God said in Romans that he gave us all the measure of faith. Not a measure, but the measure. That means all of us receive the same. It's up to you and I what we do with it. Amen. 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 In First Chronicles, in First Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 5, he said, The weapons of our warfare are not part of the mighty through God are pulling down of strongholds, casting down vain imagination, and everything that uh, comes against the knowledge of God and bringing obedience in everything. That's right. Amen? He said, it's up to us, church. The devil wants to build a stronghold. Some of you heard all your life, you're never going to be no good, you're never going to measure up, you're never going to have anything. 
never going to be nobody. Nobody cares about you. That becomes a stronghold. And when, when God tries to send his love to you or send something to you, you're not able to receive it because you've got this mindset, this stronghold. Well, I'm always, you know, I'm an addict and I'm always going to be an addict. I'm a loser and I'm always going to be a loser. You can't receive what God has because you're believing that. You've got to break those strongholds with the truth. He said the truth shall make you free. When he talked about it, he's not just talking about the physical. He's talking about mentally also, church. There's a lot of people sitting in church houses that love God with all the heart, but they're bound mentally, emotionally. There's more. I, I dare say there's more people sitting in church today that are scarred and hurt emotionally than they are physically. Exactly. Amen. Your physical wounds are healed, but sometimes it takes a long time, to, and only God can heal your emotional yes. hurt. Yeah. 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 He said, cast down those vain imagination. Those things, when the devil comes to you and tells you something contrary to what God tells you, right. cast it down. Amen. Don't sit there and say, yes. well, you know, that does make sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he works in the sense realm. Oh, church. Right. God works in the spiritual realm. Amen. <laughs> so when he begins to tell you something contrary to what you know is the truth of the word of God, don't entertain it. He's been doing it for a long time. He's a lot smarter than we are. Okay? Amen. So don't entertain it, cast it down. Don't give no place. Okay? He said, bring every thought in obedience to Christ. Jeannie? Sometimes uh, it sounds good up here, and then when you say it out, the devil's gone. <laughs> and once it's out there, you can't bring it back. can't bring it back. That's why you don't use the sweet words because you have to eat them. Amen. Amen. All right. And then we saw in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3, that everything we see, everything that's, cre everything that's created was created from the things we cannot see. Everything that, that you can touch, feel, see, all was created by God who's a spirit in the spiritual realm. He spoke it into existence. That's what you and I are supposed to do, church. We're supposed to call those things forth. We're supposed to fix those things forth. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hebrews 4 2, he said, the same gospel preached to them, preached to us, but it didn't do them any good because they didn't mix it with faith. Amen. It's not going to benefit you, it's not going to profit you unless you mix it with faith. Amen? Amen. And then my favorite scripture, Romans 12 2. Be not conformed to this world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's what you're doing here tonight. You're renewing your mind. You're hearing the word of God. You're listening to something that's going to cause you to be refreshed and renewed in your mind. It's going to change the way you think. Hopefully when you leave here, you're going to change the way, the way you think about some of the things you thought about before when you before you walked through those doors. Amen? Turn me to Romans 4 right quick. And this scripture, these, these scriptures right here kind of nail everything we're talking about home. Romans 4, verse 17. Amen. He said, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Remember, we've talked about this many times. God is calling him the father of many nations, and he only have a kid. Right. So what's God doing? He's calling things that be not as though they were. When you say, when you speak your healing over your body, you're not saying, well, I'm denying the fact that I'm sick or that I've got something in my body that's not right. You're not lying about it. You're just stating the fact that the fact may be that I have this in my body, but the truth is that Jesus said by his stripes I was healed. So I'm going to believe the truth over the facts. Because so I have people, I'm not going to go around and say I'm, I'm healed when I'm sick. Well, then you're going to stay sick. Amen. Amen. Just I'm like trying to tell you how to do it God's way to do it. Exactly. And church, it, it doesn't work any different for Pastor Joe and me. We have to do the same thing that you yes. have to do. Amen. We don't have a special hotline with God, okay? <laughs> My mom, we used to teach mom all the time. Man, when we, want we really want God to hear a prayer. We really want something from God. We run to mom all the time. We felt like she had this red phone. And, and she prayed, <laughs> God answered in heaven. But listen. We're all on the same basis, church. It's what you do.
If you don't have the knowledge of what he's promised you, you don't have the faith to receive it. Amen. If you never pick this Bible up and read it, you're never going to know who you are, who, what you can be, or what you can do in God. Right. Some people never read the Bible for themselves. They go to church and they well, some pastor to tell them everything they need. Listen, I've told you time and time again, you don't take somebody else and work for it. You go to the Bible and you check it out for yourself. Me, any other pastor, I don't care who it is, you go check it out and work it off for yourself. Because this is your eternal salvation exactly. on the line. Amen. And I'm not going to base my eternal salvation on what somebody else says. I'm going to see it for myself. Amen. 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 All right. One of the promises God promises about prosperity. Now listen, every time we talk about prosperity, everybody thinks about money. This money calls you prosper. But there's a lot of different ways to prosper. If you've got peace, you're prosperous. Yes. If you've got joy, you're prosperous. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. If you're able to show the love of God to people that you used to couldn't show the love of God, you're prosperous. Amen. 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 He said, you'll not lack anything that's needed. Psalms 34, 9 and 10 says, Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want to those who fear him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Here's the problem. The majority of people don't seek God until they've got a crisis. In their Come on. Amen. That's right. That's right. When their back's up against the wall. Then all of a sudden, I'm going to go to church. I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to pray. You and I were talking about this a while ago. And this is what happens a lot of times. They'll see God, God will show up, He'll meet their need, and then you don't ever hear from them. No. Amen. Until the next crisis. Okay. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So God will take care of your day to day needs in the Bible. Matthew 6 31 34 says, Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Matthew 6 31 34. What shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear for after all these things the Gentiles seek? For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is, of his, is its own trouble. Now, this is another one of those conditional promises. This promise is for those who put God first. That's right. He said right here, seek first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness or his way of doing things. And he says, if you do that, then everything you have need of, yes, listen, be. I didn't say this. God, God said did. this. Amen. He said, everything you have need of, he will take care of. It's true. Trouble is, we're not putting God where he needs to be, but we're free. Where are you, God? How come you not meet my needs? God said, why come you not put me first? Come on, Amen. 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 You know, we, I know we have the Holy Spirit. Sometimes I don't think he talks loud enough. Don't you wish sometimes God would just say, if you do your part, I'll do my part. Then maybe we would get it. Okay. Amen? He says, don't worry about tomorrow. I was going to say, raise your hand if you're worried about tomorrow. I don't want to know. <laughs> he said, don't worry about tomorrow. Take care of what you're going to do today. And I'll take care of tomorrow. I say, we're worried about things that may never even come to pass. That's true. And listen, I'm not trying to condemn nobody because I'm just as guilty. But when we worry, we're saying we don't believe God. Amen. That's right. Bottom line, we can whitewash it, do all we want to, but bottom line, they're saying, Lord, I just don't trust you. He said, as you meditate on God's word, your way will be prospered. Joshua 1 8. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate it day and night, that you may observe to do. Say do. Do. According to all that is written in it. For then, say then. Then. Then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Yes, Listen, thank you, Lord. you get that word in here, <sighs> you begin to confess it out here. He said, then you're going to make your way prosperous. Amen. And then you will have good success. Because you're getting agreement with God. You're saying what God says about it. You're not saying what you see, what you feel, what you hear. You're saying what God says about it. I 
We prayed for somebody this week and they're having a lot of issues, and I was telling them, watch your confession. Yes. Because we can pray over you, we can lay hands on you, we rub all the hair off your head. <laughs> but if you leave out here and you got a wrong confession, then all that's for nothing. Amen. Because we have a free will. That's right. And God's not going to force His word upon you or His will upon you. You and I have a free will. And we pray and we believe God, and I'm agreeing with you on the word, and you go out there and say, Oh, I don't know what's going to happen. It's just going to work for me. It works for me. Then you just nullify all the prayers. Exactly. Of the Thank you. Amen. Because your confession. That's right. He says, You'll have what you say. People, we don't even understand the importance of our words. We go around and run off the mouth all the time. Don't think nothing about it. But he says, You're going to be judged by your words. Like, it's killing me. It's killing me. Well, yeah. eventually you're going to be dead. <laughs> Because he's no way going to be judged because he says what's in your heart is going to come out of your mouth. Thank you. Amen. 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 Pastor Roger, some of it's self inflicted. I'm sorry. Some of our problems are self inflicted. Yeah. That's true. It's true. Some of our problems are self inflicted. Yes, definitely. definitely. I've heard and, that. and some of it is our own mouths. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, Thank you. When you start saying things negative contrary to the word of God, guess what? The devil says, okay, I have a legal there right you to come in your life. And Still yes, that's right. And he can go before God and says, They gave me the legal right to do exactly. this. Exactly. Thank you. Until you confess it, put it under the blood, and then the devil has no right to come into your life. Amen. Just, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, studies have shown that it takes 10 positive things to, to uh, overrun something negative that you've spoken over your life or has spoken over your life. Ten positive things can get rid of something negative. And this is another thing. You can say something negative and everybody's got an ear. Okay. Yeah. You got that right. Say something positive and they just ignore you. Oh, you got that right. Yeah. But I like what, hey, listen, I like what Faye did. I, mean, I got the laugh when I read it. The thing is, she she said, Pastor said, count things like they work. So I turned my windshield for wipers on. I, I went down that. town. People looked at me like I was crazy. I love and she said, I'm leaving God for rain. That's right. And sure enough, it rained in Soledad that day. Yes, <laughs> yes, it did. I wasn't specific. <laughs> Listen, if you're kept, if you're doing, what, I'm getting back to my scripture. I'm sorry. As I written, I may be a father of many nations, for one whom you believe, even God, who quickened the name, calleth those things which be not as though they were. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of any nation, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be, and not being weak in feelings. Come on. No. Not being weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded. That what he had promised, he was able to perform. Amen. Right here, calling those things that be not as though they were. You're not lying, church. You're just calling. You're calling what you believe to be exactly. the truth right. over what the facts are saying. Right. Amen. Right. He said he didn't even consider his body that was. He's a hundred years old. My Lord, if I had a kid at 100 years old, I don't know what I'd do. Oh, <laughs> so much different now. It's hard enough to raise him as it is. <laughs> but he says he didn't, listen, he didn't look at the circumstances. No, he didn't. How many times do we pray and we keep looking at the circumstance? That's what the devil wants you to do. Because the more you focus on the circumstance, the bigger the circumstance gets and the smaller God gets. You begin to focus on God's word, God gets bigger and your circumstance gets smaller. Exactly. Yeah. He said, he considered not his own body now dead about 100 years old in the deadness of seraphim, and he staggered not at the promise of God through right. unbelief. How many times we hear, oh, yeah, God can do this and God can do that, but God's the Lord, well, maybe God will. I don't know if God will. Maybe he will. Maybe he won't. That's staggering, church. That's unbelief. Exactly. That's being double minded. Yes, yes. James says a double minded man is unstable all the way to see nothing. Okay. Amen. And he says right here, he staggered not at the promise of God through the but he was strong in faith. Oh, He's a hundred years old. God's promised him a kid. So this kid said, Your generation is going to be like the stars of the sky or the sands of the sea. Well, 
that came to pass because Abraham is the father of all the Jewish nation. Yes. Hagar, I mean uh, Ishmael, his son, is the father of all the Arab nations. Ishmael was born out of Abraham's flesh. That's right. Isaac was born out of the promise of God. Right. So you have the spirit, so you have the flesh and the spirit warring against each exactly. other. That's why the Arabs yes. and the Jews can't yes. get along. Yes. Amen. 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 And there are many of them over there. Amen. <laughs> says, he was strong in faith. Waiting. Waiting until he had his son to give glory to God. That's not what he said. He says he was strong in faith, and even though he didn't have a son, he was still giving glory to God. Church, that's what you and I are supposed to do. Pray the word, and then begin to thank God that he's bringing the answer just act like you already got it. That's right. Amen. That's it. Amen. I know y'all get tired of this. I just got no, this illustration. No. Yeah. no, that's just the enemy. If I told Red, if I told Red, you show up Friday morning, I'm going to give you a hundred. Let's make it 500 cents. I'm going to give you $500. What are you going to do when he comes <laughs> Listen, if Red believes that I'm a man of my word, he's not going to come back tomorrow and say, Pastor, are you sure you're going to give that to me? Come back the next day, Pastor, are you sure? No, if he believes I'm a man of my word, he's going to tell, you know what? Well, you know, Pastor's Day going to give me $500 Friday. I believe him. I trust him. Church, God's the same way. If he says something in here, you don't have to go back to say, are you sure? Are you sure? Do it. No. If you can trust God, he's going to do what he says he'll do. If he trusts me, then Friday he's going to show up and receive the $500. If. <laughs> 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 what do you hear what I'm saying? We treat God sometimes like we can't trust him. Right. And we can. He's your heavenly father. He wants best for you more than you want for yourself. The Bible says our own heart will deceive us. God knows you better than you know yourself. Because when we get to look at ourselves, we begin to kind of sugarcoat that. Well, you know, I'm not a bad so-and-so. You know, yeah. Justin, he's a lot worse off than I am. Whatever. He can make a hell and I can make a hell. That's not our, that's not who, I'm not supposed to judge myself by him. I judge myself by this. Amen. By Jesus. Amen. Amen. He says he was fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able to perform. Are you really fully persuaded that God yes. is able to do what he says he can yes. do? Yes. If you're fully persuaded, you're going to act like he fully persuaded. Yes, exactly. And there was, there's this joke I told, I know I was telling a joke, there was a, a church and, and they were praying for rain. Had to handle rain a long time, they were praying for rain. So next Sunday, everybody showed up. One little boy brought an umbrella. And the pastor looked at him and says, where's your faith? Not one grown adult brought their umbrellas to get ready for the rain they were believing God for. Them. Exactly. And this little boy had God-like, I mean, child-like faith and belief. Yes. You know, some of us, we're like, and I've said this before too, some of us, were like the, the church group that was praying for Peter when he was in jail. Okay. Oh, Lord, hey. deliver him, set him free. Yeah. The door's open up. Peter walks out, walks up to the front knock. door, knocks on the door. The little girl named Rhoda comes over there. Right. It's Peter. She runs back telling the people, it's Peter. Oh, no, it must be his ghost. See? They were asking God, but they weren't Come believing on. God. Amen. And a lot of times we do the same thing. We're asking him, but we're not really truly not convinced really or fully persuaded yes. that he can do it. Amen. Amen. All right. Are y'all getting this tonight? Amen. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I'm going to say this because Paula Box will be here Sunday, but y'all prayed for my niece. She's 47 years old. And the doctors told her her cancer has returned. Her body's eaten up with it, and that's why she's in so much pain. And when she went down, she came down for prayer for her pain. But you told her to watch her mouth when she speaks. So she started telling everybody, I'm cancer free, I don't have cancer. Her doctor called her Monday. The cancer is not back. 
it's the bones, her bones from the chemotherapy. So now we're praying for her bones to uh, deteriorating because of the chemotherapy. But that doctor told her, your cancer has returned. But because you told her, watch your mouth, she went out and told everybody, I'm cancer free. Monday, she was cancer free. Amen. 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 True. Listen, Romans 8 32 says, He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? If he gave the most precious thing he had, which was his only begotten son, wow. why would we think that he would behold, withhold anything else from exactly. us if he's willing to give him for us? Think about that. Psalms 84, verse 11. For Jehovah God is our light and our protector. He gives us grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk along his path. Or walk up right before him. Listen, we have a reason to do this. Not just to get to heaven. But we have a reason to do this here and now, now. So we can have a good heaven on earth. Thank you, Lord. Amen. People, oh, I can't wait till the sweet, oh, sweet, by and by. Well, that's great, but sweet, what about the now and now? <laughs> no. yeah. Over there, I'm not going to need it. I need it right now. Amen. Yes. God promises to heal church. Jeremiah 30, verse 17. Jeremiah 30, verse 17. For I will restore health to you and heal you of your wounds, says the Lord. God promises health to us if we listen. Exodus 15, 26, if you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases on you which I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who healed you. That was Exodus, right? Sorry, uh, Exodus 15, verse 26. Listen to what he says. How many times have he said that? Do what I tell you to do. Exactly. And he said, and you'll receive what you're supposed to receive. Amen. Psalms 103, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities and who heals all your diseases. Church, we got to get this down on the inside of us. And that becomes more of a reality than what you see, what you hear, and how you feel. You do that, you're going to begin to walk in the supernatural. You're going to see the Spirit of God moving away we never have before. The trouble is, we have spent so much time in this life that we're more acquainted with what we see, hear, feel, and touch yes. than we are what we can believe God for. Amen. That's the truth. We were talking about this just before ago. When God brought Israel out of Egypt, Egypt symbolizing the world. When they went down the Red Sea, that was symbolizing their baptism. And come up on the other side to a newness of life. The thing is, God got them out of Egypt, but he had to get the Egypt out of them. Yes. Sometimes you wonder why you're going through what you're going through. Because God is trying to do something to get the world and the world way of thinking and the world way of acting and the world way of talking out of you. Yeah. Amen. 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 The Bible promises wisdom and guidance. James first, chapter 1, verse 5. If any of you like to win, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally without reproach, and it will be given to him. God gives wisdom and guides us. He said in Psalm 32, 8, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with my eye. If you, lack, if you lack wisdom, if you want, you know, and the thing about it, once you get the knowledge, you've got to have the wisdom and the understanding. Wisdom 
is how to apply the knowledge that you gain. Yeah. Understanding is understanding how to apply that stuff in your life. Amen? Yes. And he says, if you ask me, ask me in faith. Don't doubt. I ask God every day, Lord, give me the wisdom that I need to do what I need to do. Exactly. Yes. Not my wisdom, his wisdom. Yes. Amen? Amen. He says, in all your ways acknowledge him as direct your path. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord depart from evil. How many times, you don't have to raise your hand, but how many times have you thought that we had a better plan than God? Amen. I think we all have. Yes. But he says, don't, don't be wise in your own eyes. Sometimes we think, well, God, I'm smarter than you are. That way's the long way. I'm going to take the shortcut. Listen, with God, there is no shortcuts. Man wants a shortcut. Even the devil, whenever he was tempting Jesus, he said, here, I'll give you all these kingdoms if you just bow and worship me. Well, Jesus wouldn't have had to go to the cross. He could have took the shortcut. And listen, what the devil was offering him, he had a right to offer him because he was the god of this world system. Because Adam bowed his knee to him and sinned right. and gave him the authority That's so right. that he was offering Jesus. He rightly, rightly had the right to offer. That's right. That's right. Amen. But Jesus didn't take the shortcut. Nope. He went to the cross and did the way God wanted to do it. Yes. And look at the effects. Thank you, Lord. And look what would happen if he took the shortcut. It's just natural for us. We want the easy way. We want the, the we want to do it the what's less work on us. Do you know what? I didn't learn to be a paint contractor by taking shortcuts. That's right. See, that's the people I used exactly. to compete with. They took shortcuts. Just what happened? Take people payout. would hire them. That's right. We didn't take shortcuts. People would hire them. They knew they could trust them. They knew that's they right. could depend on them. Amen. If I told them I was going to do something, I did. Amen. Amen. God promises that he'll guide you in Isaiah 30, verse 21. And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way to walk you in. When you turn to the right hand, when you turn to the left. You ever had God speak to you? Yes. About going something. Maybe he's going one direction. God says, Hey, buddy. Yes. Don't go that direction. Yes. I had my mom call me up one night. This was before I got saved. I was still running the world, going to the bar, doing my thing. And my mom called me up and she said, I had a dream or a vision, I forget what she told me, but she said, don't get in that red pickup tonight and go anywhere again. That's my truck. Listen, I didn't, wasn't serving God, but I had a fear of God, and I knew my mom had a walk with God. Amen. You know what? That truck sat there that night, and I didn't go nowhere again. Yeah. Amen. I listened to what she said. Sometimes we're so busy, even if God spoke to us, we would, wouldn't know he's speaking to us. Amen? Amen. I know the Holy Spirit's spoken to us many times. We've got to do behind your seat. But that's not what we want to hear. Not today, Satan. Okay. Just saying. Hey, even, even the Bible says in the last days, guess what? They're going to have people that want to go and they want to have their ears tickled. That's right. They just want to tell me something that's going to make me feel good. Don't tell me something that's make me feel like I, I need change something. I was just tell me something tickle my ears make my flesh feel good. Listen, I'm going to love you and I'm going to speak the truth in love but I'm going to step on your toes sometimes. Yeah. It shocked me when I first started preaching. It seemed like the more I stepped on the toes, the better the people liked it. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> but we need it. He says this medicine. Most of it, you don't like taking medicine. I don't like taking medicine. But it's good for us. It's going to help us. Yes. And sometimes this medicine is hard to digest. Sometimes the truth hurts. Yes. Amen? Amen? We say, oh Lord, make me like Jesus. And then we start pruning. Wait a minute, God. I don't know why I've got to give this up and turn loose of that. Well, you said make me like Jesus. Come on. Listen, you're a prayer, prayer. You're going to get ready. That's right. Look what Jesus Amen. went through. Come on. Amen? church. 
But, man, I preach myself happy every time I do <laughs> 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 God promises for your children, your family, and your marriage. God will save your children. Isaiah 49, verse 25 says, For I will contend with him who contends with you, and I will save your children. Now, that's conditional. Those children still have to accept Jesus Christ as the yes. Amen. Mom and Daddy, you can't do it for me. Right. Grandma and Grandpa, you can't do it for me. They have to accept Jesus. Every person has to accept Jesus Christ or reject him. Even, even after the millennial, during the millennial reign, Jesus is going to reign here on this earth for a thousand years. People are going to be born during that time. And then, Satan's going to be turned loose for a season. You know why? Those people are born during that time have to make the same choice you and I have to make. Yes. Either yes. accept or reject. Yes. And you think, how could they reject Jesus when he's ruling and reigning here on the earth and he does all these good things? Just like Israel, every time he got blessed them, they turned around and messed up. And you think, well, how could they do that? You and I do the same thing. Exactly. Oh, I don't know how. Man, they walked, they saw God's miracles and everything. How could they do that? You and I do the same thing. How many times God moved in your life, did something you thought was impossible, one look, and God showed up and did it. And then down the road, we still, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> God didn't change. Right. He did. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. Psalms 127. And this is one scripture I'm not sure if I agree with. It. Psalms 127, verse 3 and 5 says, Behold, children are heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward, like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so the children want you. Happy is a man who has a quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but shall speak with their enemies in the gate. Children are supposed to be a blessing. Sometimes I don't know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> they are a blessing. Sometimes you don't know what to do with them. Yeah. I'm sure God feels the same way about us. Yeah. Yeah. God calls husbands and wives to mutually beneficial marriages. 1 Corinthians 7 3. 1 Corinthians 7 3. Let the husband render his wife the affection due her, and likewise also the wife to her husband. Ephesians 5 25. Husband, love your wife just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he may sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of the water by the word, that he might present to her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy without blemish. Oh, so husbands ought to love their own wives as their own body. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it just as the Lord does the church. For we are members of his body and his flesh and his bones. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery that I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself, and so let the wife see that she respects or submits to her husband. Don't you notice? He said the wife and the husband is supposed to love the wife. He doesn't tell the wife to love the husband. He tells her to respect or submit. Amen. Now, if that husband is being the Christian he's supposed to be and loving her like Christ loves the church, loving her like he does his own flesh, it's not going to be hard for that woman to be able to submit to that kind of authority. Exactly. Amen. That kind of authority is going to be based in love, and yes. they're going to do the best authority. Amen. 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 That's right. and most men got this attitude. Walk tall, carry a big stick. I don't think I'm so. I'm a man. That's not what God said. Thank you. Amen. I know from experience. If I come to her with honey and love, I can get her to do anything I want to. I come to her and tell her, I'm the man, I got a big stick. She's going to beat me to death. That's it. Ephesians, what five what? Ephesians 5, verses 25 through 33. Thank you. Church, we're going to have to close on that tonight. But listen, I just want to throw this in. Husbands and wives. Your wife and your husband is a gift from God. 
And he says the two become one flesh. And if you'll love, listen, if you'll love that wife, you can get her to do anything you want her to do. If you come out and just, I'm a man, I'm the boss, and you're supposed to do what I'm going to do, like I say, you may sleep with one eye open. Amen? As Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Amen? Amen. All right. God is good. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right.